Nice to meet you. Nice I'm Yukiko you. and uh, I'm a uh, Rock 10 NBA 30, 32 ambassador for uh, Oklahoma City Center. Awesome. Seattle Supersonics, everybody. Yes, yeah. yes. that's yeah. your playing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask some questions. Okay. So you were talking about three on three things last night. It's the three on three come true. Uh, can you tell me who would you want to play with? Um, well, that's a really interesting question uh, because there's so many great players mm -hmm. that, you know, there's the three on three league that happens every summer and you see a lot of guys that, that play and that are talented. Um, you know, it's, you know, Amari Stoudemire looks good. Um, Rashard Lewis looks really good out there. Um, you, you need big bodies and you need shooters. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it just really, at the, especially at my age, you start seeing the guys who commit to it and mm -hmm. who, who are ready and willing and able to, to really get back into that NBA shape, mm -hmm. you know, if it comes down to 2020. So um, I'm open-minded. Yeah. yeah, I'm so excited to see you in 2020. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you were talking about food last night too. Mm -hmm. Then. You travel all Japan. What did you enjoy the eating in Japan? Well, what was very refreshing about the food that I ate while I was here was always so clean. Mm. Um, the place we went, you know, the food was never like heavily oiled. It was, you know, very, uh, very fresh and, you know, a lot of vegetables. Mm. Um, just, I, I trusted it. So when the chef, was putting food down on the table. I just ate everything that they put down. And normally I'm very finicky. Even though I still looked at it, like, you know, I smelled it, but I still trusted it because it was, you could tell that they, you know, there was nothing processed about it. It was just all uh, great vegetables and fruits that they put together. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> I trust too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, fin you retired the basketball f four years ago. So you writing, uh, you wrote a new new book. Mm -hmm. What made you to write your new book? Um, man, so many different things. Um, I, you know, I, I see, I, I pay attention to so many things and so many people around the world and, you know, the examples people set good and bad. And um, One thing that I, I thought about is a, is a, a player man, individual like Bill Russell, uh, a guy like Dr. J. And uh, the unfortunate side of those two players and individuals was they played in an era where there wasn't YouTube and there wasn't social media, so we don't have the opportunity to really see their career in, uh, in length. Uh, there's always certain highlights that they show. Um, and then most of the people that talk about their careers, and I'll give you one more person, Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points in a game. He's the only person to ever do that. But the only footage that we have of that is him having a piece of paper up that said 100 on it. <clears throat> so as I moved throughout my career and my life, I started realizing like, wow, if I let my life pass me by and I don't chronicle the things that I do in my life, like being able to take pictures and take video and more importantly, write a book, then when, when you get older and then eventually when you die, you have nothing but somebody else to talk about who you were, and it's through their lens. So writing a book, I, give, I have an opportunity to tell people who I am in my life, exactly how I saw it and how I experienced it without somebody else having to change history, you know, and make it the way they saw it. So I think that's important for all of us, you know, to take pictures, to take video and keep it stored so when when we pass along, our grandkids will say, let me show you what my, where I come from, you know, 
the, the beautiful lineage of my family. You know, we're young now, but we, you know, we'll be 70, 80 years old and you'll be able to pull up footage when you're 20 or 30 and say, this was me as a young person that inspired your, your family. That's great. And the Japanese translation version is coming soon. Yes. Right? I'm yes. so excited. Yeah. So raising your child, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. What's the most important things to raising a child? Um, there's so many things. Um, you, you, you're never going to get it right. And there's no such thing as perfection. Uh, so many people are afraid of having children because they, they're afraid to mess it up. But you, we all know morally what's right and what's wrong. Um, I think the most important thing about raising kids is just spending time with them. You know, spending time. You know, kids, every kid will say, do you want to go outside? Do you want to play? Or you? And oftentimes as adults, we say, no, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And that's an opportunity lost to, to connect with that child and to make them feel good and strong and feel loved. And, and secondly, maybe just as important is just to listen, listen to them. Because oftentimes we're always like dictating towards or to them. But in a world that our kids are growing up in now today, they're actually smarter than we are because they're getting more information. And we're so closed off from certain things because we're jaded by the world and life and by certain people. So uh, it's just important to, to really sit down and listen to them, like ask them a question and let them talk. That's beautiful. Do, do you want them to be a basketball player? Um, I, I want them to be better than anything that I've ever done in my life. Um, they have the opportunity to see what I've done in my life and I want them to take their life and, and learn the lessons of me in my life, the things I did right and the things I did wrong and improve on it and make their life that much better. So whatever it is they choose, I just want them to compete at it. Be, be the best and make everybody around them better. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was a great story. Thank you. Well, I, I guess uh, probably it's, it's an intimidating situation because you're, Denzel Washington is one of the greatest actors of our time and Spike Lee uh, equally as a director. Um, but I guess, you know, being an NBA player, like playing against some incredible players as well and being in these pressure situations, it helped me just step into that situation and just learn, you know, be willing to understand what I don't know mm -hmm. and listening and then observing and then trying to uh, kind of put out there what they're asking me to do and uh, I always tell people I'm very coachable you know I can do anything that I set my mind to and I think that for me was you know a great challenge and ultimately uh, it came out um, in my favor where I appreciated the work that I put in. Well there's a lot um, when when I broke his record mm -hmm. um, I didn't really know that it was a thing you know I was like well I didn't believe that I was any more special than anybody else I watched growing up. And what it did for, you know, a countless number of young people, mm -hmm. it, it gave them something to shoot for, literally. Uh, so now so many kids are like, I want to do that. I want to break that record and I want to be, you know, the best three-point shooter in the league. So we don't realize that as individuals, like every time we step out into the world, we're inspiring somebody when we do something. You know, we think we're just doing a regular job or just working, but we're inspiring somebody and so you know there's Steph Curry, there's Clay Thompson, there's Devin Booker, there's uh, Bradley Bill, uh, there's just a whole host of young guys that you know they're focused in now because they see it and they want to be it. Yeah because really I think the key is going to come down to who's the most available, uh, who stays along around the longest. Uh, ultimately uh, when you look at you looked at uh, Drew, B, Drew Brees this past week uh, he now is uh, the all-time leader in yards. And I'm sure between he and Tom Brady will go back and forth depending on who ends up playing the longest. But Drew Brees is 39 years old. So, you know, you, you tend to have or see guys, you know, attain records, you know, when they have longevity in, in their prospective leagues. No, definitely not born. I don't think 
anybody born with anything, it's just learned behavior. Um, you just figure out things that you like to do and you just kind of gravitate towards it. You become passionate about it and you just obsess over it. You know, and to be great at anything, you have to be obsessive and you have to sacrifice. You know, other things, other aspects in your life kind of take second uh, fiddle. Um, so to be good at, at shooting, you know, for me, like when you're in a situation, you have to figure out if you can take this situation in a game and you, you take it out of the game, you superimpose it into practice and you work on that situation that you get in the game and you work at it as hard as you can. Like it's the end of the game and you're like, this is for the world championship. And that's how you have to practice, you know, every single time you pick up the ball. So when you get into a game, it almost seems like you're, you're just rehearsing. Well, you, you have to ask yourself, what, what is it that you want with your life? Uh, you, you think about a goal and then how you go about doing it. And uh, you set those priorities. Because I, I tell people, if I told you downstairs, you know, at 12 o'clock, I'm going to have a million dollars for you. And wh where are you going to be at 12 o'clock? Yeah, because no matter what else is happening in your life, whatever your schedule is, what you got to do across town, you're going to change that and you're going to make that a priority. So your goals, you have to make real priorities. So you can't let a boyfriend get in the way. You can't let a best friend get in the way. You can't let uh, uh, a concert get in the way. You have to stay focused because these are the sacrifices that you make for your success. So. Now I can travel the world and talk about this because all those people, like I have friends that told me, you don't really like me that much. And I said, why? He says, cause you know, every time we want to hang out, you never come. And I say, well, because I had to work or I had to put in this time or I had to go to the gym. And you lose friends because of, because they want you to be more for them than you are for yourself. So. You just have to prioritize and think about that million dollars, where it exists, and make, that, make it a priority. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, I, I try to talk about, you know, a lot of things that exist that don't, they relate to basketball, but it's about life, because we all have our struggles, and we have those people in our lives that kind of want to pull us away, because they're selfish. Like, your best friend wants you always to be with her. The minute you have to do an event, you got to go to San Francisco. She's like, why do you have to keep going to San Francisco? And you have to explain to her, if you want me to be great, you want me to go. You know, and that's kind of what greatness is. It's the simple things done over and over.